There are places called maker spaces across the country here in India and the maker spaces you find in Bangalore are a bit more special, a bit more unique compared to the ones you might find in Maharashtra, Gujarat or even in Tamil Nadu. So the thing about these maker spaces, especially the ones in Bangalore, is that they allow hardware startups to test out an idea to build a prototype or using machines that cost lakhs of rupees at a very very low affordable cost. See to make a prototype you need access to these very very specialized highly advanced expensive machinery. You need these expensive machines to cut or bend metal, to build the plastic body of a robot or even to place components on a printed circuit board. But a startup can't afford that because typically these very new startups usually comprise one or two college kids who've just, who've just graduated engineering college like three weeks ago and they have no access to funds, no investors, no experience and little to no influential contacts. And even more importantly, these maker spaces also have skilled professionals that can help you operate this these very, very complex machinery. That's an added benefit of going to a makerspace. But even more importantly, these makerspaces allow these very young hardware startups to build right here in India without relying or overly relying on China, Vietnam, or even Japan. That's the Atma Nirbhar Bharat vision actualized. So the print went to three makerspaces in Bangalore to see what's so special about these makerspaces in Bangalore and how India's Silicon Valley is turning India into a hardware nation. The first one we went to is called The Workshop. People as young as four and old as 78 come to this makerspace, including newbie entrepreneurs for building robots and drones. Children as young as eight are deciding on ideas like, uh, can I put a sensor into a lamp? Or can I, can I put a sensor that, you know, uh, into my little toy that, that moves things and responds to the words I speak? And they're learning a little bit of coding, a little bit of woodworking, a little bit of digital fabrication. So that truly allows you to uh, build a culture of innovation and self-reliance. Mm -hmm. Making the birdhouse. With the wood? Yeah. Uh, we did think of a couple of other cities and since we are here in Bangalore, I'm not going to say it's just the weather. It is the whole uh, conducive atmosphere and I'd say the environment of innovation that's happening because there's, there's a lot of startups and besides the fact that there is a lot of startups, there are a lot of people who are working uh, in tech and have the capability and time to be able to to come and use a workshop and develop personal skills. Uh, you know, um, we have a lot of product designers in here, a lot of architecture schools. Uh, so there's education, there's technology, industry, and uh, a very forward thinking cosmopolitan audience. We also visited another maker space called Workbench Projects, close to the industrial area of Pina. So this place, one of the key uh, re, uh, things about you know, working in work workbenches, we get to have a lot of contact sharing, understanding of how things work. From like, for example, I am a college graduate, I just graduated two, two weeks ago. So for a person like me to understand how to uh, build these things or to understand how those things are done, it's pretty easy to connect with people in place like this. There are people who are really senior who has been in this industry for almost 10, 20, 30 years. And then there are early people who, who knows how the new things go, but also, you need to understand how the industry has been, the history of it as well. So, this is how this thing moves. So, when th this is an actuator, a linear actuator that moves forward when current is given. So, when it moves, uh, right now it's locked in place. And this whole thing was built here? Yes. Yeah, at this? Designed, printed and manufactured uh, here. At this table itself? Yes, yeah. here. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm Jay Mandel, uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Apricot Robotics. Uh, so we basically build uh, a autonomous floor cleaning systems. So manufacturing is just one aspect of, you know, of building a company, or, of building a hardware company. There's, there's a lot more in terms of where your clients are based, where you have your, uh, your potential customers. So in a place like Bangalore, we see a, a lot of uh, potential clients for our uh, robots when compared to some other places. 
But China still has a price advantage for some components. Ajesh needs two brushless DC motors for each of the wheels at the back of the wheelchair his startup is building. A Chinese vendor is offering it at 2,000 rupees each. In India, it would be about 4,500 rupees. Ajesh is hoping the cost will come down in coming months as the technology is more mainstream. Finally, the print visited IKP Eden. So, st hardware startups have a problem. So, you can't just build a product out of home. You need access to machines, tools, labs. So, this is a center where you have a biotech chemistry lab, you have a mechanical engineering lab, an electronics assembly system, 3D printing, injection molding, all of that. So, you don't have to go around looking for vendors to get it done. Once you want to move into manufacturing, you have another network which is outside of the building which we can also connect you with and then you can go about doing your mass manufacturing. A lot of angel investors, VCs are also connected with us and you can leverage that ecosystem as well to help you build your company faster. So hardware startups uh, definitely have an advantage being in Bangalore. Any startup has an advantage being in Bangalore simply because of the talent pool, the density of uh, startups in this uh, city, uh, the number of investors, venture capitalists that are in this city. Uh, it's a more mature ecosystem, just like Silicon Valley is more mature than let's say interior uh, USA, Bangalore is the Silicon Valley of India. So uh, there is a significant advantage just by being here. Yeah, that is our robot. So that is actually the lowest payload robot that we have. It's around 100 kg payload to carry. Uh, so these are like autonomous mobile robots which doesn't need any kind of uh, layout, any structural changes in the environment. So it can freely navigate its own place. So wherever you want to uh, move the material from A to point to B point, then you can use this robot. How long did it take to build that robot? So we've been incubated in IKP for last two years now. Uh, so we, we almost took one and a half years to completely build everything. Last six months we are into sales. So you build that entire robot here at IKP? Yes. Uh, around the manufacturing and everything is done, done in here only. Mm -hmm. And assembly is also done in house. Okay. Cool. So could you tell me a little bit about how being at IKP Eden has helped you and helped the company? Oh, that is like a, a no-brainer question. So since the company itself is founded during the COVID time, uh, so that's the first uh, thing I should be always telling. So we were able to work out of uh, IKP even though everything else was shut down. Uh, then second is uh, we also got a grant from IKP. So it's possible to do all of this in India? Yes, it? it is possible to do all of in India. So how much of this did you make here at IKP? Manufactured, assembled, designed, engineered. Right. M-A-D-E in India. To people outside the industry, to people who are completely new to anything to do with electronics, mm -hmm. um, I, I would imagine a lot of people would think this stuff needs to be done outside the country. Yes, a lot of people, yes, they would think of that itself. And uh, when you even look on, on the web or you Google search, you'll find a lot of vendors who are quite far or mostly China or Japan is majorly is what they do. So yes, in that case, this facility is great. So you are able to do this stuff in India as well? Yes.